correction on the um, class notes last time. We were doing an example problem on carbon steel cylinder transient heat conduction, chapter five. Part C was find out how much energy had been gained by the cylinder after a certain amount of time. And this was the equation that we had, but I had, I didn't put the volume down, I put the surface area down. The volume of that cylinder, of course, is pi r squared times L. So make that change in your notes, and here are the two correct answers for part C of that problem. Okay, that concludes the ch four chapters on conduction heat transfer, chapters two, three, four, and five. Now we're gonna jump to chapters 12 and 13, radiation heat transfer, and come back in the last third of the course for chapters six, seven, eight, and nine, convection. So we're gonna start chapter 12, radiation heat transfer. Chapter 12 is probably the hardest chapter to read and understand. <laughs> You've been through that already? You're smiling, I see. <laughs> it's, it's a hard chapter to read and understand. So what I'm saying is take good class notes, okay? I'm gonna pick and choose out of that chapter what I think is important for this course. Okay, and besides the fact, of the three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation, radiation is probably the one that you have the least experience with. All people experience conduction all the time and especially convection, our whole life, what we build a lot of times revolves around convection heat transfer. But radiation is kind of something that people don't have a good handle or feel for. So let's first of all define what we mean by thermal radiation. Thermal radiation is the heat transfer part of radiation. Thermal radiation, we're gonna consider this to be electromagnetic radiation emitted by a body due to its temperature. The two important things there are electromagnetic radiation and it's due to the body's temperature. Electromagnetic spectrum, figure 12.3 in chapter 12, looks like this. We're plotting different parts of the spectrum versus wavelength. Wavelength down here, okay, microns, microns, 10 to the minus four, it's a log scale, out to 10 to the 10th, 100. So, first of all, short wavelengths. For, just as a, for instance, what, what's some short wavelengths? X-rays. Uh, how about ultraviolet? Okay, typically in this particular part of the chapter, ultraviolet from 0.01 down to 0.4. Visible spectrum that we see with our eyes, seven tenths, four tenths to seven tenths. Infrared, long wavelengths, seven tenths out to a hundred. Where does thermal radiation fit into this? Okay, here's the thermal radiation part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It goes from 0.1 out to a hundred. That's what we're looking at. Now, we go back to our chapter one, we had a very brief introduction to um, thermal radiation in chapter one. And we talked about the concept of a black body. Okay, so black, we'll go back to chapter one and expand on that. So black body. I'm gonna put down two important concepts of the black body. It emits the maximum possible radiation. And number two, it absorbs all incident radiation. There's a number three that says it's also a diffuse surface, but I don't want to discuss a diffuse surface right now, so we'll get back to that later on. But essentially, a black body absorbs all incident radiation 
and it emits the maximum possible radiation. Now, how is that radiation distributed? Well, it's distributed according to something called the spectral black body emissive power. I'll write the equation down first, then I'll define this. E B lambda. There's two subscripts. There's a B and there's a lambda. Capital E, chapter one, stands for emissive power. Units are watts per square meter per micron here. Of course, B means black body, not a problem. Lambda means at a certain wavelength. That's called spectral. Spectral means wavelength dependent. Wavelength dependent. You have to give me a wavelength right there, lambda, in order for me to give you an EB lambda. It's wavelength dependent. Just a reminder, remember anything to do with radiation, every time we see a temperature has to be at absolute. If we're given the problem in degree C, add 273 degree K. So everything should be converted to absolute right away before you start the problem. Otherwise, you might end up making, quote, a silly mistake. Okay, C1 and C2 are constants. See the text for values. Okay, so... We can plot this. We can plot E, B, lambda versus lambda. I'm going to pick a certain temperature. Oh, I don't know. I'll say T is 1,000 Kelvin. Now, if I say T is 1,000 Kelvin, I'm going to plot E, B, lambda versus lambda. Okay. The shape of the curve looks something like this. That's at a temperature T1, let's say. Now I'll choose a different temperature. Oh, let's say 500 Kelvin. Curve looks like this. Let's say 300 Kelvin. Curve looks like this. Where T1 is greater than T2 is greater than T3. I'm going to box this guy in. Oh, by the way. Okay. That equation is given a name. Planck's law. Planck's law. Now, I notice the shape of those curves. Every curve seems to go through a maximum. Okay, here, here, here. Now, I can connect those max maximums with a line. Looks like that, the dashed line. If I do that then, I get what's called the displacement law. which is lambda max t equal a constant C3.
in uh, SI. So that equation is the equation of that dashed line right there. Now, don't get confused by the subscript maximum. That has nothing to do with the maximum wavelength. You can't say, don't see, even say it. Here's what you say. This is the wavelength at which the spectral, black body spectral emissive power goes through a maximum. This is the wavelength where, give me a temperature, I'll give you a wavelength where that curve goes through a maximum. If the temperature is T1, this equation gives me what? Go straight down here, that gives me that value which I call lambda max. If the temperature is T2, put T2 in here, that'll give me where that equation goes through a maximum, and so on. That's what it means. It's the wavelength at which the spectral emissive, black body spectral emissive power goes through a maximum. Okay. Now, we're going to integrate over the whole curve. So I'm going to leave that guy up there for you. Okay. All right. I want to find the area under that curve. I want, I want the emissive power EB. I don't want the lambda on it. I want the total emissive power. I integrate this guy. And when I do that, I get a very simple expression. Integrated over all wavelengths, the emissive power becomes a constant, sigma, times the absolute temperature raised to the fourth power. You think, wow, you integrate this complex expression here, and that's what you get? Yeah, that's what you get. And of course, that's chapter one. So now we have chapter one, Stefan Boltzmann Law. Yes, mm-hmm. Is the C3 from a chart, or is that one value centered on the other? I'm sorry, say again. Is C3 from a chart? Uh, no, it's, it's in the textbook. It's not a chart, though. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, I just, are there more than that value? There's one in, 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 in English engineering, too, gotcha. which we don't care about right now, but it's in the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that is what we have when we integrate over the whole area. Now, we can also say, what if we don't want to integrate over the whole area, but we just want to integrate over part of the area? So here's the curve for a certain temperature, T. And I want to find out how much energy goes from zero to here. That lambda can be any value. I don't want to confuse things there. Okay, that area right there. All right, so that area right there is this. Integral from zero to lambda, E B lambda, D lambda. And 
F stands for fraction. I'm going to write an expression for the fraction of energy, this area divided by the total area. That's the fraction. So integral 0 to lambda, eb lambda, d lambda, divided by integral 0 to infinity, eb lambda, d lambda. I'm going to save some space here and put that down here. I need more space. And uh, that gives me the fraction. Now, but you have to integrate from zero to some lambda to do that. Well, the book gives you the results that have been done for you. So luckily, you don't need to do any integration. Uh, table 12.2. Gives you one column titled lambda t. The other column is titled f0 to lambda. That's this guy here. So, left-hand column, take the wavelength lambda in my picture, multiply it by the temperature of the emitting surface, absolute, go here, find that value, and read off F0 to lambda. Once I know that, oh, I know this guy right here. This guy right here is sigma t to the fourth. I'll put that down here. There it is down there. So the table's available to do that calculation. Now, I'll take one more case. Somebody says, well, you know what? I want to find out how much energy is contained in this area. That's a band between wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2. That's a band. We call that the band emission. So I'll write that out then. The fraction of energy contained between wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 Chapter 12, and radiation in general, is very vocabulary intensive. You have to understand the language of radiation or you're going to be in deep trouble. This chapter contains multiple words. The word spectral, okay? Spectral. Emissive power. Irradiation. Radiosity. Specular. Sounds like spectral. No, it's different. Oh, there's a ton of different words that mean something. And it's hard to solve a problem in radiation unless you understand the language. Our author's been very good. End of the chapter. 
a whole page of definitions of words, half a page of definitions of words. So there, if you ever say, well, what does that word mean? There it is, the end of the chapter. It's there. Okay, now let's go back to here again. So, bandy mission. All right. Um, what is this divided by that? Okay, that's equal. By the way, let me mention first of all, this numerator, what am I doing here? Okay, you can see, I'm taking the area under the curve from wavelengths of zero to lambda two, where my two hands are. Subtracting the area under the curve where my two hands are. What am I left with? This, the band. That's what I'm doing right here. Divide by this guy, so take this divided by this minus this divided by this. Fraction zero lambda two minus fraction zero lambda one. That's what we do in the case of band emission. Sometimes band emission could be important, like solar cells only respond to certain wavelengths. So maybe you want to know what fraction of the sun's energy are contained between two wavelengths, because that's where my solar cell generates power. Okay, you're concerned about band emission then. So there are many places in the rural engineering world where we're concerned about band emission. Question, yes, sir? But can you do, can you do uh, the integral from lambda one to lambda two? Of okay, you can. You want to do that by hand, or you want to try go to a table? <laughs> don't want to do it. Don't want to do it by hand. Only this table's done for you. This is the easy way out. Of, of course, it's the integral from here to here. But where do you find the integral? Nowhere in the book. But can you find it? Oh, yeah, you can integrate it. But it's much easier to do it that way, where all you do is subtract two things from the table rather than do the real calculus integration. OK, so band emission using table 12.2. All right, so let's look at a problem then. Uh, we're going to take the solar spectrum outside the Earth's atmosphere, for instance. So, example. Find the fractions of solar energy. in ultraviolet, visible, and infrared regions of the spectrum down here. All right, so let's first of all write down um, what my, uh, well, we're going to assume Sun behaves like a black body at fifty eight hundred K. Thermal UV. Visible infrared suns. Now, any problem for homework or exam, we treat solar radiation as if it came from the sun at an equation came from the sun, which behaves like a black body at an equivalent temperature of 5,800 Kelvin. 
you say, well, did I miss something? Did they, did they send a probe into the, on the sun's surface and record the temperature? I, I don't recall that. No, I don't think so. So how, how do they get that temperature? Well, one way would be, let's just use this one. One way would be they send a probe up on a spacecraft or satellite, point a thermal detector to the sun with a certain wavelength filter on it, wavelength filter, so only certain wavelengths are allowed to come into this sensor. And so they use different wavelength filters and they say, okay, this is what we get. That's what we get when we put different filters in here. And so I'm gonna connect this guy. I say, hey, you know what? That looks a lot like the shape of that black body curve that I saw in the textbook. I think the sun might behave like a black body. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna assume the sun be, is like its equivalent temperatures, 300 Kelvin, room temperature. No. Room temperature, no, no, not even close. I'm gonna guess the sun's temperature is um, 1,000 Kelvin. Oh, getting there. I'm gonna guess the sun's temperature is 10,000 Kelvin. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna guess the sun's temperature is 5,800. Say, whoa, I got it, I got it. My best guess now is the sun is behaving as a black body whose temperature is 5,800. Good, that's what we're gonna use in this class from now on. Okay, back over here. So here we go. That's where that came from. To use that table, table 12-2. Okay, lambda 1t equal lambda 1, 1 tenth. Temperature, 5,800. 580. Lambda 2t, I'll put them all down. Lambda 3t, lambda 4t. Four tenths. 5,800, 7 tenths, 5,800, 100 times 5,800, 580,000, 23, 20, and 40, 60. Okay, now go to table. Um, and my first lambda T 580. Second one, 2320 and 4060. And then way down here, 580,000. Okay. <clears throat> Fraction. 580. Zero. 2320. 4060. Almost there. The table's really long in the book. There it is. Starts on one page, ends up over here. Big table. The last table entry. Hundred thousand? Make sure. Yep, hundred thousand. Last table entry is 100,000. 
So that's not going to work. I need 580,000. The table doesn't give me that answer, even close to it. Oh, yes, it does. 100,000? I'm going to extrapolate. I'm going to extrapolate. Sometimes extrapolation is good. Sometimes it's bad. In this case, extrapolation is fine. I'm going to round it off to 1.00. Of course you will. Why not? If it's 0.9999, guess what 580,000 is? 0.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999